think uh, urban education is a challenge. It's a joy as well, but it's a challenge because you walk a fine line. You walk a line in a community that doesn't value education in the way you do. And But what it can do is to make all the difference to those children's lives forever. When Jenny Comish came to Kensington Infant School in Liverpool in 1990, first as a deputy head and then as a head, she realised she had a huge challenge on her hands. A fall in role, low morale, angry parents and undisciplined pupils were just some of the issues Jenny faced as she battled to turn the school around. Kensington is an area really, you could almost describe it as a bit of a lost community. A lot of problems with poor housing here, lots of buildings boarded up. They've moved prostitutes up from Liverpool 8 into this area. There's been periods when there's been a lot of gun-related violence, drugs. Issues like domestic violence, just not enough money. Kensington is an area of high unemployment. It's white, working class. Uh, now we've got a lot of ethnic minority groups coming in, most recently Polish, Czech Roman name people from Slovakia, which brings a very interesting slant into the, the community and to the school. Simple things like infestations from rats, uh, and that sounds odd, I know, you know, to a teacher, but you know, what are you going to do about it? Because schools are seen that way, uh, you know, we, we are seen as the, the people who can sort out the burnt out cars quickly, and I think that's why the school is very important in a community like this. When I first came to the school, there was uh, a feeling of um, perhaps maybe the leadership of the school wasn't strong enough to deal with this particular area. Parents felt very strongly that there was bullying in the school, that the school wouldn't sort out problems for them. The children, I think, didn't respect each other or care for each other. And generally, it was a thing that I felt very strongly, and so did the staff, that we needed to work on. We decided that the key thing was for the children to understand what the expectations were of them. And to achieve that, they had to have some input in, in, in setting down the code of conduct. They had to understand it and they had to have a reward for keeping the code of conduct. So we began by looking at a whole school approach. The thing that we really had to look at, I felt, was the discipline within the school. It was causing a lot of tension, uh, a lot of worry amongst staff. Um, there's nothing worse than being in a school where discipline is a problem, that you can't teach, you feel uh, vulnerable uh, and you're in conflict all the time. And so we took on board the, um, the positive approach. Lots of support, lots of celebration, lots of belief in them as children who could do well. So we went through a period of years where we did all sorts of things, star charts, celebration assemblies, letters home to parents, sticker booklets that you went back, special days. Over the, the first two or three years it was a building process, but Within about four years, I think that that code of conduct, that approach which was shared by the children and staff, embedded itself into the culture of the school. And we don't tend to have those problems that we would have had then. I want children who are sparky and bright like Liverpool children are, but who are able uh, to focus on their work, to listen well, understand the importance of being kind to each other. mum but she's not answering her mobile and I've also tried to phone Harry's mum and unfortunately there's no answer on that mobile either. Well Reese's mum is about what three quarters of an hour late now um, and uh, Harry's mum well I'll keep okay. trying to see if, uh, if they answer. Yeah. All right. okay. okay thanks. <laughs> I don't know it's such a problem when parents don't come in uh, and you're expecting them, you've set aside time um, and other provision for maybe your deputy to do something while, while you, you're seeing this parent because it's so important to the school itself but to the parent. They've got an immediate problem, get onto the phone, get very aggressive, upset, angry. You get very concerned, you make an appointment, you wait. It's disappointing. 
the main challenges of being an urban head teacher in this particular area I do think it's understanding the community the context that the school's in and it changes and how that impacts on what's going on in school and how it can affect it's essential for us to be in good heart in the community to be respected by the community and valued by the community and it's difficult sometimes to keep to walk that tight road to make certain that people here feel that we're giving them the best the community does suffer a lot of drug related problems here and that of course does display in the way that the children are brought to school or not brought to school children are often frightened Frightened about leaving their parents, what's happening to their mother or their father or where they are. The end of the day, will they be here to pick them up? That's difficult for staff to see a distraught child waiting for a parent, worried about what's going on. I mean, for us, of course, education, education, education. And in many ways, parents will agree. But sometimes their actions don't support that. In issues like attendance, Many people are dealing with such profound problems in their life. Getting their child to school is not the main issue of the day. Currently, we're running about 91% attendance, and that's all okay. So we have to work really hard at that. I am confident that it is not to do with the curriculum or the provision within the school. It is the wider problem of helping parents to understand that day in, day out, school is important. We have special assemblies where there are prizes for full attendance. We do it every week. It's Monday. Is Mrs Malone here? Mrs Malone is going to tell us who's won the attendance award this week. We've got 91.9%. That's over that 90%. We try and get to it and give ourselves a cheer. Right, in second place, winner of the silver cup, 93.8% well done, it's 2H, and the minor cup. So that means our winners this week will be fabulous, 95%, that means nearly every child is in nearly every day all week, it's 1H. Well done. And give them a big clap. you've got oh you've brought your forms back for mrs comish have you let me have a look oh well done thank you bailey let me have a look see yours and who's this heather and dorella well done liam thank you very much for bringing these in gosh you all done very well and did you help your mum and dad fill for me that's good some years ago I thought it was important to actually know what parents thought about the school because you can assume things. Uh, so what we did was to send out a questionnaire each year that feeds into the school development plan. Questionnaires based on the Ofsted questionnaire but with a space in which parents can write a comment. It didn't work very well to start with so I thought about how I could you know, achieve a higher response. So in the end I decided that we would for every questionnaire that came back to school, the child could have a book. And that worked brilliantly, because one thing's for certain, these parents want the best for their children. And if there's books going, and I've got to write the questionnaire answer, I'll do it. I use the questionnaire in several ways. I record all the responses that parents have given, negative and positive as well. And I use that to feed back to the staff. In the school development plan, the negative remarks are in red. They are there because I think it's important to put those comments as well as the good ones. What I would like you to kind of note really is the very positive remarks that parents make. They're saying, uh, I love the one about why your child likes coming to school. That is completely positive, 100%. People of the questionnaire responses say that they enjoy coming to school. The one that has the most disagreement with parents is the homework element. Um, quite a percentage of parents feel that they don't have enough homework and this happens year in, year out. Parents are very generous in their positive remarks and, them, and they say some pretty 
wonderful things and I put the responses up on the wall so they can read them. In the climate of every child matters is a very strong piece of evidence where you're seeing actual parent writing. So we use it in all sorts of ways. And although it takes time consuming, I, it's something I wouldn't stop doing now. I think headship can be quite lonely. It is quite lonely because in the end, the book stops with you, as it should. And it's very demanding in as much as that you must always, you always have to be your best at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day when you're meeting different people. There are so many things that you come along that you think, who can I discuss this with? We have a very good governing body. It's a federated governing body with a junior school, with a very experienced chair. And we run a series of committees, as I'm sure many uh, governing bodies do. And those committees, it's at that level that we, I, I get the support. They're very aware of the area the school serves. Several of them come from the area, of course, because they're parents. They're totally committed to the children and the best approach, but they're also very supportive. I'm glad you managed to come in just before the governance meeting because this morning um, these flyers were distributed all around the area. What they're doing is picking up all those issues that are sort of simmering out in the community at the moment. There's rising feeling about families coming in uh, and you know all those kinds of rumours about the kind of benefits they get. And we've been through this before and um, it did have an impact, if you remember, on the school at the time. I know that what we've done previously is give a very clear statement of what our yeah, views are in the issue and that we reinforce the kind of stance that we've made in the past. Yes. Um, when we first had a lot of asylum seekers, we made a very strong view in terms of how we felt that that contributed to the life of the school and enhanced our children's experience because we do live in a multicultural world mm -hmm. and it is important that our children are happy in that kind of mm -hmm. environment. I think what I've learned about being ahead in a school, in, in, a, in an urban context, in an area like this, is to, to take the time to find out what's going on now. It takes time to deal with the distraught parent, the parent that, you know, um, will take all morning to go through an issue when I want to do something else, or it's no good. That time is needed, and I guess that's the hands-on bit. I mean, there's lots of research to say headship is very important, it does make the difference. And I've thought about it, and it sounds very aggravately to say that, but I think it's true. The sort of culture that the head sets, the standards that the head sets, the actual belief. And if you don't do that as a head, if you don't role model that, well, you're not going to get other people doing that. I like urban children. I like the, the city children. Um, if I'm truthful, I like the challenge. Sometimes I'm tired, sometimes I think, oh, do I really want to do this? But in my heart I do. I, I know it sounds twee and old hat about making a difference, but I do believe education can make a difference and I do believe that the way we work in these kind of communities can make the world of difference to these children and that's really what I want to do.